Hi, my name is Andrei Baibo. I'm a software engineer at UI Park. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. And today we'll be looking at a single one click deployment of UI Path Orchestrator, the latest version 20.10, onto AWS infrastructure. Uh, historically, this has been quite a challenging uh, endeavor because we, there are many moving parts. You have quite a number of servers, you have to take care of the database, everything has to be. Uh, scalable we need to look at uh, availability and we need to make sure that everything is in private subnets that are not publicly available on the internet so we have a solution now which is quite easy to use as we will try to demonstrate um, we have on the screen right now what the intended architecture is and we see that there is a private subnet and a security group there which contains an auto scaling group this will be the main workhorse. Uh, it will run the instances. It will contain the instances which run Orchestrator, the EC2 instances, Windows Server. And we also have the Amazon RDS instance, which is the database, the SIPO database we use in the background and for the persistence layer. And we also have the high availability add-on, which acts as a in-memory cache. On the other hand of the screen, we have in the public subnet the Bastion, which or the jump box, which allows us to RDP through it into the private subnet. And we also see the application load balancer, which acts as the entry point. And we also add an SSL certificate on that uh, application load balancer for, well, to, to, to validate the fact that we are indeed who we, who we pr pertain to be. Now, uh, the entry point, the main entry point into this is the AWS Quick Start on the GitHub page, on, in the GitHub organization owned by, Git, uh, by AWS. And it's quite easy actually. There is a link here which will take, <coughs> which will navigate to the uh, AWS console. As you can see, I'm already authenticated and we will just change the region. Let's say that we want to uh, deploy this in US West 1 in Northern California. And the entry point will be the main template, which is hosted by uh, AWS in an S3 bucket, which they own and is public or publicly available. All we have to do is input the parameters. It's a very small number of parameters that we need to uh, take care of. So first of all, we will choose the uh, availability zones for the highly available setup that we're aiming at. And I will choose both uh, zones which are available in USS West 1. The number of AZs, the number of availability zones needs to match the, uh, the number of zones that we actually uh, pick from the dropdown. Most of the parameters are, you can just leave as they are. They have some default values. All I have to make sure is to choose the instance pair, the instance key pair, which is, which will allow us to later um, RDP into the instances in case there is trouble, in case we have any issues. And one of the only prerequisites is to have a route 53 hosted zone already in the AWS account or in the organization. And we have uipathmarketplace.net and we also need to provide the fully qualified domain name uh, for the load balancer. And let's say that we have uh, test1.uipathmarketplace.net. We will also provide the high availability add-on configuration input parameters and a password. We will leave this uh, as default and the RDS uh, username and password. The initial instance count, uh, it can be one, it can be two, three or more, up to 20 if I remember correctly. I'm gonna leave it with two for now. Uh, it is an auto-scaling group and therefore it will scale up and down based on demand. 
but it will not scale below two by itself because we do need to make sure that if one availability zone disappears or goes down the other are still there to uh, take up the load and the orchestrator password as well and the last thing is that we need to make sure that the QSS region uh, bucket region matches the region where we're deploying which is US West 1 that Mm, any tags that we want, want, let's say we want to add a project uh, demo and any stacks policies or stack creation options. Let's say that we want to add termination protection so nobody can come and just simply delete our stack. In case this happens, there will be a pop up which will prevent that person from uh, deleting the stack. We will review and hopefully we didn't miss anything. We will acknowledge and we'll click on create stack. Oh, there we go. We have one small issue. The database password I chose is not valid. Hmm. Let's go back and provide a better password. Hopefully this will be better. And we have a validation. We have acknowledged everything and we just click on create stack. Uh, the CalCommation engine inside a AWS, inside our console will take over and will create a set of nested stacks. Uh, each of them containing a subset of the resources that are required to uh, to, to provide our orchestrator outcome um, network stack and we also configure the SSL the front end SSL certificate this process usually takes in the vicinity of 30 minutes so we will be back then and around 30 minutes later our stack is complete this is the top stack or the entry point if you want which contains a number of nested stacks I would say that the main one or the most important one is the server stack, which contains our machines, our orchestrated EC2 instances. They are all inside an auto scaling group. And I will also open the configuration bucket. So our machines are inside an auto scaling group called UiPath server stack. Uh, we have a desired capacity of two as we chose when we provided the input arguments and we see that our uh, instance list are uh, healthy they are red and they are in different availability zones and so in case of an event in which one availability zone goes down we do have the remaining one to take out over the traffic and we also have a configuration uh, a bucket which contains our configuration json this json is used as input parameters to further to subsequent uh, EC2 instances so in case we go from two to three or four or five or in case we cycle through all the EC2 instances this uh, configuration file will provide the input parameters to the installation MSI and if we go to test one or track path market result we see that that we have the front end I've already uh, signed in and we have an orchestrator which works which is good it took around 30 minutes just a few prerequisites and we are pretty happy with the outcome uh do tell us what you think as well andre